I'm a bit of a technophobe, yeah. so pressing okay. the buttons good. almost beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so um, good evening. My name's Maureen and I am a cataholic and these are my confessions. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so um, any crazy cat ladies in the audience, actually? Am I the only one? Aspiring. <laughs> aspiring. Oh, oh, aspiring, yes, okay. So, um, yeah, my story is long, it's sad. So it began because my mother was, in fact, a crazy cat lady, and it was she that gave me my first fix at the age of four. Yeah, she brought into the kitchen this beautiful little black and white adorableness uh, that she very imaginatively named Kitty. <laughs> and I've been hooked for life. So, uh, yeah, I subscribe to a magazine called Cat World. Has anybody seen this magazine? Oh, it's got full colour photographs of beautiful pussies and articles on how to look after your pussy. Um, this month they have one on how to correctly insert a pill into your pussy without causing yourself damage. Is that enough pussy, Joes? <laughs> No! Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, yes, a definition. I've looked at an amalgamation of the definition of crazy cat lady, and this appears to be it. <laughs> yes, elderly or middle-aged spinster with many cats. I, I don't know, I'm not crazy about that, even though I'm a crazy cat lady. So I've come up with my own definition. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Individual, I'm very inclusive because men can be crazy cat ladies too. <laughs> okay, so um, history. There have been many, many crazy cat ladies and men and cataholics through history. Here is a sprinkling. So it's a little bit blurry, but I think you can see Ramesses at the top. You'd expect an Egyptian ruler to be a crazy cat lady, right? Uh, Freddie Mercury famously rang his cats on tour. Um, oh, Isaac Newton. Hey, brains, you see, you have to be intelligent. And um, yeah, Florence Nightingale, um, she was a real cataholic, totally addicted, over 60 cats in her lifetime. So she was kind of like a, the Keith Richards of the crazy cat lady world. <laughs> So, what's the science behind this affliction, this addiction? So, I had a little delve into this, and scientific reason number one. They are not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, scientific reasons two, three, four, five, and six. So, <laughs> Oh, jeez, have you ever seen anything so cute as that? What's wrong with you? Oh. Enormous orbs. You see, when a cat stares at you, it's like they're burning a hole in your soul, and, and you're not quite sure if they want to love you or eat you. <laughs> Let's go back, let's go back. This one. Ah, floof meisters. They are the floof meisters of the animal kingdom. So when you're a crazy cat lady, basically your clothes are covered in floof, um, your food is covered in floof, your guests are covered in floof. Essentially your whole life is floof covered. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> Toxoplasmosis. So this is a real bit of science actually, guys. So. Toxoplasmosis is a parasite whose primary host is cats, right? Um, but it can infect other animals, and scientists have found that when it infects mice and rats, there's sort of a rewiring of the brain that happens, like a sort of chemical reaction. So they're actually attracted to cats and thereby get eaten by cats and then the life cycle continues, right? So the mice and rats are actually attracted to that which is most dangerous to them. And they wonder if the same might apply to humans. <laughs> um, apparently, 20% of Americans are infected. That explains a lot. <laughs> I 
actually, unlike Americans, it's just their president is a bit like toxoplasmosis, isn't he? Yeah? <laughs> Infecting the minds of the American people, so they're attracted to that which is most dangerous to them. <laughs> Have I got a bit too political? <laughs> okay, so uh, we've done, yes, okay, we've done Donald Trump, we've done toxoplasmosis. Okay, so bearing all this in mind, this is my new dating profile. Middle-aged, <laughs> riddled with toxoplasmosis, six gentlemen with fur coat, whiskers and toe beans. Form an orderly cue, please, gentlemen. Actually, toe beans is a bit gross on a man, isn't it? Although I have been out with guys with toe beans, but I think they're called verrucas. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about my cat. So, Bonnie and Clyde. Mum, that's how you name cats. And this is Clyde. As you can see, he's a ginger ninja. Ginger top of his head, tip of his tail, ginger eyes, and a little gingery by nature. And he had this amazing walk, you know, when he walked down the hall, it was a lot of shoulder action, like a really dangerous prairie cat. But he was in fact this big, saggy, baggy, gorgeous cloth cat of a cat. And his major loves were uh, food and lax. I'm told these aren't original. Uh, but, you know, we'd be sitting there watching the television and he'd come in and he had to get this look in his eyes like, oh, two lax. And it'd be like, oh shit, he's going to sit on a lap, and then that's it, really. You can't move. In fact, there's a gap in the market there. I think they should uh, create some nappies for crazy cat ladies so they never have to move from the sofa. <laughs> have I gone a bit too far there? Okay. Anyway. What's he got on your lap? That was it, really. And, you know, he had this amazing purr. It was like a whole body action purr, like a, a set of furry billows. And, and you kind of get mesmerised by it. And it was like, you became the purr. The purr became you. And it was like this <laughs> spiritual thing, you know? It was so utterly, butterly gorgeous. <laughs> Clyde, please give him a round of applause. <laughs> Okay, and this is Bonnie. Oh, yes, thank you. thank you. That was the right. That was the right reaction. Just not enough of it. <laughs> yes, yeah, she was like a chocolate box beauty. She was like as plump as a turkey and full of love. And. Clyde had this sort of kind of shoulder action walk, but she had this like trot, like a little pony, and she would just trot down the hall to meet me, and she was just full of love, you know, full of love. And she did this thing where she'd sit on the back of the sofa, and I'd just walk in the room, she only did this to me actually, and she'd just stick her ass in the air and start purring. <laughs> I was so, so, oh, so flattered. <laughs> We did this little game when we were on the sofa where I'd just turn my head round, she'd stick her ass in the air, I'd turn my head back and it'd go down and I'd keep doing it and we'd, we'd have a bit of, I think it was a visual, you'd have to be there. <laughs> anyway, you know, like all stories, they, they all come to an end, don't they? And um, so three years ago, dear Clyde had a heart attack and died. Oh. Yeah, thank you, yeah, 11. And then... Bonnie, two months later, got diagnosed with cancer and then almost exactly a year later also passed away. Mm. So it's like, you know, grief is just this awful kind of feeling, isn't it? And um, there's this song, that old devil could love again with these rocks mm. in your heart. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like carrying around a sack of rocks and it's like, oh, things are never, never going to be okay again. And... They kind of never are in a way, but you kind of begin to build your life around that massive chasm that's been left, right? And you know, scientists have been looking into the nature of grief and, and what they've discovered, because there's this perception, isn't there, that the grief that you have for your beloved animals is different from the grief for your beloved humans, but in fact what they've discovered is there's no difference, you know? Grief is grief. And um, actually, some people grieve their animals more. And I was pondering this, I was thinking about this, and I was earwigging someone's conversation because I am a little bit nosy. And there was this guy, I think, trying to impress this girl, and he was saying, Oh, 
what you see is what you get, you see. What you see is what you get, said it a few times. And I thought, well, that's the thing with humans, isn't it? Because what you see is never what you get, right? <clears throat> what you see is what I'll show you, but what you get, right, is the 90% beneath the surface. And what is that? Well, that's like, that's like a whole cast of characters, isn't it? It's a whole set of masks. But you know, if you're lucky and you meet someone special and you allow yourselves, you, you become vulnerable enough that you can get on your metaphorical wellies and you can wade through all the, the, the ideas that you have about yourself, all the different masks, all the different characters, even that secret little, little place where you lock all your lies and your, your nasty shit that you don't want anyone to know about. Even that shit you might get to see. And then if you wade, if you wade a bit deeper and a bit deeper and a bit deeper and a bit deeper, boom, maybe you will hit that essential essence, that divine nature, that true nature, that which we really are, that which connects us to ourselves, to each other, and to the whole planet. And wow, isn't it amazing when you get there? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there you see <laughs> you're already there it's got floof it's got toe beans they never got disconnected you see like we did like the same with all animals I was looking at that beautiful little dog earlier I mean they're all there they're all present they, they've got their true nature their divine nature on show to you they never got disconnected you know and this is why we love animals because it reminds us of our true nature, you know. This is why we have therapy animals, isn't it? It's like you get a bubble of joy despite yourself just hanging around an animal. They're so healing. And I think it's just because it reminds us of who we truly are, yeah? So, you know, what else did I learn from my cats? <laughs> Be true to yourself. Well, it's kind of the same, isn't it? Did anyone ever meet a cat who was worried about their self-image? <laughs> It's like, they give zero fucks about everything. <laughs> Take sleep seriously. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Apparently, 17 hours out of 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> Apparently, human beings in the West are averaging five. No wonder we're so fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Approach life with dignity. Well, cats are dignified, even when undignified shit is happening, right? I mean, you know, humans, we have a tendency to clutch, to cling to shit, don't we? To people, to situations, to whatever. But cats, they're just graceful. They just kind of glide through their life. They just get on with what they've got to get on with, right? <laughs> and love. Well, I definitely learned about love from my cats, you know, giving and receiving love. But, you know, I don't want to give human beings too bad a press because if you tune into the news, if you see what's happening in the world, you, you'd think we are all about the hate. But actually, I don't think anything further could be from the truth. I think that our default setting is love. That's our true nature. But somehow, and I don't know how it happened, we got disconnected from our true nature and in that disconnection we got disconnected from nature itself and we've just allowed terrible things to happen to our planet and terrible voices to come out of that crack you know terrible voices of hate psychopathy to kind of begin to steer the human race and and drive the human show so I feel that if ever there was a time to wake up to our true nature it's got to be now, right? Because with love running the human show, there is nothing we cannot do and there is nothing we cannot heal, including our broken hearts and including this beautiful planet. Thank you so much for listening to this.